Hey, yo, what up? It's Josh with Reboot Graphics, and you're tuned in to Cross the Street with Jimbo. Uh, yeah. I don't even need no pad. Uh, I spit this shit off the top. Uh, Nigga acting like he bad. Uh, he ain't got no Glock. Uh, I bust it straight off the block. Uh, I ain't got to punch no clock. Uh, I don't know what I was thinking. I fell in love with the thought. Yeah. I fell in love with the money. What is good? I'm here today hey, with Josh going? from Reboot Graphics. How are you, sir? Not too bad, not too bad. I'm doing good. How about uh, yourself? I'm doing great. We're out here at McMinimins today, the classic poor farm, they call it. Um, brought you a gift if you watch the show enough. Oh. There's a little something for your extracurricular oh, activity. Appreciate that, appreciate that. Extra yeah. large uh, across the street tee for you. Like I said, you know, I, I forgot your shirt, but I'm going to mail that to you, so... We got a Reboot Graphics package for you at home. I just left it because I'm a stoner. <laughs> I was just telling him my legendary story of driving to St. John's without a battery for my camera. Right, so. right, right. <laughs> um, so what have you been up to, man? How are you doing? You doing good? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Uh, I've just been working on my Reboot Graphics company. It's a company that I kind of decided to start, you know, during COVID. A uh, company that I was working for decided to fire me while I was on, you know, medical uh medical whatever you want to call it and uh the doctor basically said you couldn't work a certain amount of hours they decided to fire me for it so i got put on unemployment for about a year and i was like you know what i don't know if i really want to go back into the work field you know dope i kind of just feel like i I should be working for myself i've done it a few times and i failed but where where else you gonna learn if you don't fail you know so i decided to take all those learning experiences and sit down and really focus on on what I wanted to do and that seemed to be graphics because that's been a part of my life I don't know all of it yeah that's so we the short little moment we had to chop it up before we started here I was saying we've only been friends him and I maybe three four weeks on Facebook and I've seen so much of your work pop up and you know all the people that you've worked with you know Endo and Frank Loke and um Faya you made the fire Faya I just met Faya over at Kid Fresh's uh a uh, little pop-up event. She invited me out for a pop-up event, so I went out there, threw up a table, and I met them. No Kid Fresh and Frank Loke since back before I even started Reboot Graphics. They were the kind of the, the chime in the ear saying, you know, why don't you do this full time? Why are you just doing this on the side? Why are you just wasting time? Like, this is what you should be doing. No, that's... And I was like, all right. <laughs> Yeah, we, I, I just missed you that day, actually. The next day, I think you showed up at the Kid Fresh event um, for your little pop-up section there. Yeah, I was there yeah, the day yeah. before with Kid. <laughs> so I was trying to get out there the day before, but, you know, sometimes you just got to stay behind the computer and actually do something if you want something to actually happen. <laughs> yeah, those eye bleeder sessions, we were talking about those, yeah. You know, people want to build a company. They want, you know, they want the image. They want the whole, the whole thing that comes along with the look. The idea is cool, but the hard work that you got to put into it, you know, it's no joke. I mean, sometimes I don't even sleep, but maybe three, four hours a night because I got to be up the next day to do something. And, you know, being 40 years old, that, it's a little hard now. Working for yourself is a pleasure sometimes, but you never stop working. Never. Yeah. I think never. there's a little, little silver lining to that statement when you say you work for yourself. Right. <laughs> it's cool and all, but I mean, you know, you're getting messages at 11 o'clock at night when you want to be watching TV or even passing out, and they're like, hey, what do you think about this, or can you do this? It's like, you know what? This is what I signed up for. I saw your message, that your, your post this morning about the graphics rush, the 25 extra dollars for the rush. Yes. Um, great. That's a great, great tool to use. <laughs> I think that, you know, a lot of people, they do want, you know, some kind of rush delivery. Sometimes they don't think about it or something fell through and they just kind of want to get it out of the way and know that it's going to be done in time. And because I have to stay up those extra hours that night or get it out, you know, extra extra quick, you know, that's where the rush fee comes in. I mean, you got to pay for my personal time. They said the winds were going to kick up to like 75 out here this tonight. Yeah, so. I heard that. They said they had snow signs up on the uh, overpasses I was coming I in. They were like, have your chains, have your studded tires. This is the uh, classic Jerry Garcia statue here. Oh, this is dope. I brought Scooter down here, or Easy. Easy, me and him came down here. The locals will smoke joints around him and leave their roaches on him. Okay. So it's got cool. Clearly, like, the wind's blowing them all away. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> it's got cool, like little like turtle shells. That's and, actually very good work there. Isn't it cool? 
This is like the hidden gem here. I, I think a lot of people don't ever see this, and I'm always like, well, you've it never seen It almost looks the... like he's standing there, like he was just a part of it. Even like the little missing finger situation yeah. that he had. And... So from an artist standpoint, yeah, that's probably pretty cool, yeah? Actually, I really enjoy stuff like this. It, it's got the details. It brings out the very, you know, features in his face without going into too much detail. So, I mean, that's a lot of what I do with cartoons and stuff like that is just bring out the main features. I saw cartoon. the little Mario Brother one that you did. That was that was that Magic yeah. Magic Nine. Or? Uh, yeah, they hit me up and they said they wanted a uh, Smash Brothers type theme. They <laughs> yeah. wanted to do Mario and Luigi, and they wanted to do it more themed to them. So I was like, you know, I could do that. I could, you know, throw the features of the mustache and the hair on there while still keeping the Mario look. Sure, yeah, yeah. it was really so, cool. I was like, yeah, that's pretty dope. <laughs> yeah, I kind of enjoy that thing. Uh, I've been drawing cartoons as a little kid, so you know Disney cartoons. I always tried to resketch them as I was watching. And so you said you're 40, right? I'm 40, yes. So you're not much younger, and I'm 43. So digital media art is that something you must have started on pen and paper then? Right? I was pen and paper. Yeah. I uh, actually my art goes all the way back to like printing press. I ran oh. a, a machine that would run actual one oh, color at a shit. time, and then you would have to run the whole section again match up the lines and get the color exactly how you need it and one little even a, a centimeter is noticeable big time so i mean yeah. you have to be precise and very disciplined with how you lay it out and how you reline it up and get the new colors cleaned off you know and put the new colors on so were you a comic book kid is it, a lot of comic books as a kid or no uh Ninja Turtles. Oh, dope. All right. Ninja Turtles. All I grew right. up Ninja Turtles, G.I. <laughs> Joe's, a lot of cartoons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I did a little bit of comic books, but it was more or less, you know, you ran into somebody that did them, and you were like, hey, those are cool. Got into X-Men that way, and so I'm yeah. a big fan of X-Men, but not so much this Marvel thing. I mean, they've done great with the movies, and I like some of them, but not a hardcore Marvel. Right. Yeah, I'm about the same attention span. I think I'd probably had to pick, I'd probably say I'm a Teenage right. Mutant Ninja Turtle fan too. Huge Ninja Turtle fan. A lot of the early Disney stuff was always really captivating to me as a young kid. Right. Um, just because I think that was like our only choice for a lot of cartooning back definitely, then. Definitely, yeah. definitely. And it was always interesting to me how they would do it. So, you know, you I learned how the, the very features were just, you, you draw it on a piece of paper whole new piece of paper and draw the whole next section and you go thousands of papers frames per second yeah. yeah and then you go back to this digital world that we're in it's the same thing i mean when i'm drawing it's literally frame by frame so you know three minutes of frames thousands 24 of frames a second is that the animation speed that you use or I, 12 i like to go a little bit more i like to stay in 30 or more just wow. because i like to stay fluid i like it to be fluid you know I don't mind the choppiness. A lot of people do good with it, but I want the words to look more genuine. Wow. Like the the mouth is actually saying what it's Anybody saying. Anybody out there that knows what frame by frame work is, uh, that's that's a huge hats off to you there, friend. <laughs> yeah, well, nobody's willing to pay the price. <laughs> oh, that too. <laughs> you know, they, they come, they say, hey, I want to do a, a music video cartoon. And it's like, how many minutes? And they're like, oh, two and a half, three minutes. And I'm like, that's like $1,500. That's even being nice, I feel like. <laughs> that is. Yeah. But I mean, that's my starting, yeah. we're talking, that's where my starting point is. Sure. And they're like, you know, okay, this sounds dope, but then it never goes through. And it's like, you know, I understand. The price is a little steep. People don't quite understand. But it, you know, that's why I always say, when you come to me, you can sit down and we'll talk. I'll discuss everything. I'll discuss the process. Have you ever uh, taken on a pro? I mean, not to, to bring up failures, but as an artist, we all have you ever taken on a project yet that has been out of your league that you've just been like, holy shit, I can't believe I said yes to this? Uh, I'm very critical of my own work. Most so artists are. A most lot are. of times, I will send it off and they'll be happy, but I'll be sitting there like, I just don't know. I just don't know. And then my buddy that I live with, and, you know, he's been good friends since seventh grade, he's always like, you just got to be more confident in yourself, bro. You just got to be more sure. And I was like, but I maybe if I had longer, and I come up with all these reasons on right. why I could have done better. 
Because that's the way my mind works. I think artists, we're all hard on ourselves anyway. Yeah, so. definitely, definitely. Very critical of our own work. <laughs> very, very That's critical. why they say, you know, I, have, I had for a while a cartoon <laughs> photo of me on my Facebook. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, that's really dope. You did that? And I was like, no. And I'm very honest about it. Sure. That particular photo, I don't want to do myself. I don't like my art for my face. I can draw myself all day long and I'll find things that I just am upset with. And it's just, I don't know if it's I'm my gonna perception have to agree. or whatever. No, but. I agree with you. I, I make beats and I, you know, I like to write hip hop music as well from time to time. And I hate doing it on my own beats. Right. It's like, I just, I already did that. Right. <laughs> you know? Somebody just has that extra flair. Or they get a little more in tune with what you have for an idea. And it works better when you have a bouncing idea. Right. You know, when you can work off somebody else, maybe that artist sees you a different way. They don't look at you the same way that you look at yourself. So when you want a self-portrait, you want someone else to there do it go. because they're going to see funny. you in a different light than you see yourself. Do you have any artists that you looked up to over the years or people that you kind of enjoy their craft or? Growing up uh, as a kid, Picasso. Wow. Huge Picasso fan. Wow. Just was, it was art classes that pretty much did it for me. Um, I would say a lot of the, the assignments, they would say, hey, pick an artist and, and replicate his work or whatever. And I was just always in love with his stuff. Wow. So I did, uh, I did a thing back in high school called The Tragedy. And I redid his thing. And uh, he did it in oil, but I did it in pastels. So I went ahead and redid it. I was kind of upset with the turnout because everything was great until I got down to the boy. And I kind of messed up on the boy and I wasn't really happy. And with pastels, yeah. you can't erase. You just kind of stuck with it. So at least at that time, that's what I thought. So, you know, it was, it was a good learning experience. But after that, I would say that once I got in the digital world, I had to focus on myself a lot. I was self-taught. Not a lot of people wanted to give me the opportunity to learn the proper ways. And so I had to go on YouTube, find books, go to the library, whatever it was. And then once I got out of the military, that's when I actually found somebody that I was like, that person makes clean, great graphic work. And that's my goal in life. Like, that's where I want to be. I saw your uh, little commercial that you uh, showed a little sneak peek of there. That's pretty cool. Some yeah. 3D tracking, it looks like. Definitely, uh, definitely. Yeah, yeah uh, I, that's a new thing I'm trying to bring out. It's kind of in the works. I'm editing it. Uh, I had another commercial I shot and did with Bostic Film, but I just didn't know what to do with the footage. I had this idea, and the idea wasn't coming to light. Sure. And I was just like, let's just shelf it for now. Let's go a whole different way. Use a little bit of the footage for this new commercial, but go a whole different route with it. So that's kind of what I'm doing with this commercial. And uh, I'm hoping that it works and I hope that, you know, gets uh, some people noticed. I'm bringing in my new slogan. I haven't really had a slogan for Reboot Graphics. So I'm go. bringing in my slogan. It's called Get Focused, Get Noticed. Hey. Which means we get focused on your work so you get noticed. Welcome to Cross the Street, a podcast in motion. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's my little tagline. Right, there. right. <laughs> we, well, I feel like, you know, after a while, you have to have something, something that brands you, something everyone's got, you know, McDonald's mm, loving it, you know. Yeah. Whatever it is, you got to have something. And so I think that get focused, get noticed is, is kind of what describes me. It's what I do is I get focused. I get down to what I need to do. And sometimes I don't come out of the realm, out of the tube of designing until eight, nine hours later. Yeah. And I'm like, ooh, I'm hungry. <laughs> you know, work, again, working for yourself, you know, the start and stop times are just that. They're start and stop right. times. There's no period to what a clock or 30 this or. <laughs> well, you can't shut your brain off all the time. Especially as an artist. Yeah. yeah so, I mean, sometimes when you want to go to bed, your brain all of a sudden says, hey, I know how to fix that. And you're like, I'm going to bed. I'm going to bed. And your brain's like, no, you're not. And I'm like, I'm going to bed. And he's like, no, you're not. And I'm like, all right, fuck it. Did you have creative friends that you grew up with? Like, I, I, I'm not too great with the pen and paper as drawing, but as a child, I had friends that I used to draw with and share artwork and... 
I had people that I hung out with, people that I knew, people that would say I was friends. But I didn't have anybody, like, for a lot of the years growing up until about seventh, eighth grade, I really didn't have friends around. Okay. So it was just me in my room drawing, me watching cartoons bit drawing. Bit of an introvert then as yeah, a child? Yeah, a little bit yeah. of introvert. And then once I got into, like, seventh, eighth grade, I was like, ooh, friends are kind of cool, you know? And then, you know, mom mom was a little bit of a... A, po- uh, a, a disappointment in that area because she would be like the, the disciplinary. She's like, oh, he's gonna get you into trouble. You can't be hanging out with him. And I'm like, man, I'm just trying to have friends. <laughs> oh no, you're not gonna have those friends. It's like, all right, it's all right, whatever. <laughs> but you know, things you learn. I think art and you know music as a young kid kept me out of a lot of trouble. So I'm sure yeah. it probably did the same for you. Honestly, friends or no yeah. Friends, you know? <laughs> and then it allowed me to also develop my own personality. Oh, you know, that too. When yeah. you're not surrounded by people, you're not trying to act like other people right. too much. You know. Very true. This is cool. Look at this nice little. Oh yeah, this is cool. Stairway. Let's go kick it up here for a second. Oh, here we go. Just a little. Tucked off little seating area here. Ah, McMinimus is great. I love this place. Oh, this there. is nice. Out of the wind. Out of the wind for a second? Yeah. So you do a lot of digital stuff now. Do you start still on pen and paper with most ideas or? Um, not really anymore. I have a Wacom tablet. So oh. it's kind of like just drawing on pen and paper. Uh, no pencils, no shavings, no eraser <laughs> dust. So it's kind of nice in that aspect. Uh, you got to kind of fine tune it when you're doing different things. So it's not quite like a pencil. With pencil, it's a lot easier to just pick up your weight and sure. lighten up an area and then put a little bit of weight on and darken up an area. With with a pen and the Wacom tablet, you can't really do that so easy. So you have to change a setting of pressure sensitivity. Well, you would more or less create a new layer and make it a little bit lighter, sure. and try to shade it in better. And then it would be several layers, maybe, to overall get the shading effect that you right, want. Right. So I mean, with cartoons, a lot of times is I'll start with a main layer of color, and then I'll go over it and I'll put a shadow in a few places that I think it needs a shadow. Okay. And then it'll really bring out other features that, hey, I mean, might need a little shadow here, a little shadow there. But not too in-depth because then you're getting into, like, the 3D realm. Right. And you are you go to the YouTube University like me? You go- <laughs> uh, YouTube University a little bit. Um, I picked up a lot of books. I spent four years in the military, so a lot of that four years was all on Adobe, working for Marine Corps, oh, designing cool. logos, designing, you know, I worked straight with generals and everything to, to produce some. So your military experience was graphic design? Yes, yes. So you came from a graphic design military experience to start your own business, essentially? Pretty much, yes. Yeah, fucking A, man. So, I mean, yeah. when I joined up the military, I was smart. What division? What's that? What'd you, what'd I was you first, do? second, and third Marine Division. Marines. So I, yeah. Marine, so right. I was in, I was in California for a while, and then I went over to North Carolina for a while, okay. and then I spent two years in Japan. Oh. So I, I was stationed over there for two years, just kind of doing the graphics thing and, and living life on the island, and then coming wow. back every so often, you know, wow. when I wanted. So it was a nice experience. That had to be great for your digital brain being in Japan. Was there a lot of ex- like technical stuff over there that you got to experience that we don't have here? Or uh, Okinawa isn't so much of what you would think uh, okay. as as like Tokyo or something like okay. that. It wasn't big fancy. It was a seventy something mile island. So I mean, you could literally drive the whole island in a day. But it was it was nice. It was a. Uh, it was a, a breathtaking experience because it took you out of America and let you experience another country for a couple of years. And then you got to come back to America with a whole different perspective on life, on respect for elders, on, on what it took to get somewhere, you know, and just the way, you know, another country lives. Yeah, that's true. Man. Cool experience, though. Yeah, I mean, definitely, I feel like, definitely. I feel like if someone told me that you could go somewhere, whether it was the military or whatever, for four years and do some shit that you like doing and then come home and start your own right. business doing the shit that you like doing, you're like, yeah, that sounds like a plan. Right? <laughs> yeah, I definitely, you know, I told them there, and then they are like, hey, if you want to go somewhere else, where you want to go? I was like, Australia. Fuck. That's the next place I wanted to go. That was the only place I was heading. I was like, don't send me back. 
Give me the fuck out. <laughs> yeah. Right, just take me over to another country. Well, we ripped through about 20 minutes here pretty quick. Um, you want to give some love or a special shout out or anything you didn't get to say before we get out of here today? Uh, personally, I just want to give a shout out to Frank Loke, uh, Kid Fresh. Those two were the main reasons why I started Reboot Graphics and they kind of, you know, helped me realize what I needed to do. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Kenny Millennium, Cool Nuts. Those are a couple people that also gave me some knowledge along the way over the past few years to be able to build myself and be a person of, of who I need to be to run this business. Shout so out. shout out to them. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Ace Doe, shout out to Sleep Bandana, a couple of my boys, my brothers, that we, uh, we spent years together and we did a lot of things together that helped mold and develop who I am today. So I appreciate them for that. And there's a lot of other people, a lot of clients, my Gunny Clammer, uh, from back in North Carolina. There's tons of people out there that are all responsible for me being who I am and Reboot Graphics being who they are. So this is not in any way me 100%. This is me with everybody backing me. Well, your work is what's got you this far and your social networking and your ability to retain clients, it seems like. So give yourself a little credit there, my friend. Give I'll yourself. give myself a little, <laughs> a little, but not too much. Yep, they started the fire. They got the fire running. Busy day Gotta here. Gotta warm up. Busy, here, busy day here today in McMinnville. Right, right, right. Looks like it's moving around. So what are you going to do the rest of the day? Uh, I think I got to head back and I got to finish a bunch of designs. I have a few that have to be done by Friday. So uh, sitting behind the computer for the next couple of days and then I'll be on Park and Spark for an interview, I think, this weekend. All right. Shouts to Brandon. Yeah, shout out to Brandon. Big ups to Brandon Spaulding. Frowns. Um... Yeah, Brandon, let's get you. I told her, I made a little comment on there. I said, we should park and spark and then safely cross the street together. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that comment. It made me laugh. It was a good one. Uh, well, yeah, I definitely think you guys should cross and do, do a little mashup. I think that'd be awesome. No, I love I love Brandon. He's a, he's he's a good guy. Good dude. He's been real supportive he's of everything. He's another one that gave me a lot of knowledge. Yeah, yeah. His show is very... Uh, inspiring to me as well to do what i do so yeah, definitely. shouts out to brandon definitely um well if there's anything i can do for you in the future man uh let me know fall is upon us as you can tell the leaves are starting to come down all oh, over yes. the place it's a beautiful time of year beautiful time of year as long as it's not raining i'm in the wrong place for that you know that it's gonna rain you know <laughs> it's amazing how much i don't <laughs> like rain but i love to be in this area you know it's gonna rain <laughs> All right, friends. Well, I'll see you soon. Uh, Appreciate it. Cheers, friend. Thank you. Hey.